Hello everyone and welcome. This is the second of a five part series where I have teamed up with Formula E and in this video we're going to be talking about whether or not the future of transportation is electric and what role electric cars have in the future of transportation. So to help answer this I was at the Mexico City e and while I was there I was asking this question you know what is the future of transportation uh, to all of the engineers the team managers that I could find um, and so there was quite a bit of good insight that they shared and so I wanted bring up five of the points uh, that were kind of brought up during those discussions and talk about you know what is the future of transportation. So first up I was speaking with Lucas Degrassi who is the season three Formula E champion. He also has been making a remarkable uh, comeback this season four. He's also the CEO of Robo Race so electric car uh, autonomous racing and he also in all the other free time that he has is developing an electric bicycle so an electric bike that has 100 kilometers of range on a single charge. So very cool work that he's done. He's a brilliant dude and also a very good driver. And so I was speaking with him and one of the great points that he brought up was that, you know, electric adoption is all about size. And so if you think about like laptops and cell phones, these all use batteries. They're all electric. And that makes a ton of sense for small things. So small things, electric based power makes a ton of sense. So having a battery, makes a lot of sense. As you get larger, for example, a cargo ship, where a cargo ship is paid uh, based on, you know, how much cargo does it bring. So you want a really high energy density fuel, like diesel fuel, versus a battery, which a battery won't have the high energy density like diesel fuel. And so that means you would have to have more storage on your cargo ship taken up by batteries, taking up more space, taking up more weight that could be smaller, uh, meaning, you know, economically it doesn't make as much sense. Same idea with an airplane. So an airplane, obviously weight is extremely important. The more weight you have, uh, the more lift you need to produce to actually fly. And so jet fuel, very high energy density versus batteries with a lower energy density. And so you would have to have a lot of weight carrying batteries and that's just wasted energy. You know, from an energy standpoint, you don't want to carry all that excessive weight. And so where do cars fit within all of this? And they're kind of right there in that happy middle area where for some people, based on your scenario, they do make a lot of sense. If you're in, you know, a city where you don't have long travel distances, battery powered cars do make a lot of sense. Uh, you know, all the infrastructure is right there uh, versus, you know, let's say you need to tow things. Well, then maybe a battery doesn't make as much sense uh, because you have to have quite a bit more uh, weight in the form of batteries just to be able to tow and pull all that extra weight, those extra distances. So it kind of depends on your scenario for, you know, the current day, what makes more sense, electric or internal combustion uh, from an energy standpoint and from a cost standpoint. And so it's dependent on how that changes with time, energy densities, whether or not uh, larger vehicles are able to adopt electric technology and battery technology. So this brings me to point number two, which was with Vinit Patel, who is the chief engineer for Mahindra Formula E, very brilliant guy. And so what he was saying, you know, often this comes down to location. So what's the environment that you live in? If you live in an urban setting, so in a, in a city with high congestion, short travel distances um, and charging infrastructure, then electric cars do make sense. If you're out in the middle of nowhere, you know, if you live in a more rural environment, uh, electric cars don't necessarily Necessarily make sense because you've got longer travel distances, you don't necessarily have the charging infrastructure, uh, and so you know things like hybrids in those urban settings uh, or rural settings make sense. The infrastructure is all there ready for hybrids. Uh, they're very efficient. Uh, they, you know, have a low environmental impact in comparison to uh, many of the internal combustion engine alternatives. Uh, so hybrids, the infrastructure is all there for in today's current age. They do make a lot of sense. And then the other point that he was bringing up was hydrogen. And so, you know, it, it's all about economics. And currently, uh, economically, hydrogen doesn't really make sense. It's super expensive. And from an efficiency standpoint, the energy required to produce it uh, is, is worse than if you were to just create energy and put that into an electric car. So for a hydrogen car, you have to produce the hydrogen, then you store that hydrogen in the vehicle, then the vehicle turns that hydrogen into electricity, and then it uses that electricity to actually move the vehicle. 
versus an electric car, you produce the electricity, you store it in the electric car, and then you power the electric car with the electricity. So it's a simpler process, there are less losses throughout that process, and as a result, it makes more economical sense. So why might there be a future for hydrogen transportation? Well, simply put, there's a ton of hydrogen available. So if we can find economically viable ways of producing hydrogen, because we have so much of it, it's such an abundant element, uh, if we can find economical ways of getting it available for use, then it could start to make a lot of sense because you do have you know, clean energy consumption with hydrogen. You don't produce emissions, you just produce water. Uh, but the cost right now is you know, kind of a, the limiting factor where it's expensive to produce and currently most of that production is done using natural gas. Now, this leads to the third point, which was a discussion with Delphine Bisquet, who is the team manager for Venturi. And she actually has a history working in Formula One, um, out of college from, you know, she graduated with a degree in mechanical engineering, went to work for Williams Formula One, and worked in development for the KERS system, so Kinetic Energy Recovery Systems, and then from there moved on to working in Formula E. And so, very brilliant lady, uh, and what she was saying, you know, ultimately what it's going to come down to is which form of energy is, do we have sustainable production? So there's really two parts you need to look at. An electric car is sustainable energy consumption, but of course it's also dependent on where does that energy come from? So you need to have two parts of the equation in order to satisfy everyone's needs. So you have to have sustainable energy consumption as well as sustainable energy production. So whether or not it ends up being electric cars using batteries or electric cars using using hydrogen as the fuel source is dependent on whether or not the production of that hydrogen is actually sustainable or the production of those electric cars as well as the energy used for those electric cars is sustainable. Now historically energy production does become greener with time and so electric cars do start to make sense there. So then why might there be an argument for hydrogen? Well hydrogen vehicles use much smaller batteries because they're using hydrogen as the fuel source. They're then transferring that turning it into electricity and storing a small amount of that in a battery, but most of that is just used to move the vehicle. So if you have smaller batteries, then you have a more sustainable option if the production of the hydrogen itself is sustainable. Now, continuing the point that energy production gets greener, gets more efficient with time, uh, we get to our fourth point, which was a discussion I had with Nikki Shields. So she is the Formula E pit lane reporter. She also hosts a TV show called Supercharged. Uh, and so when I was discussing with her, one of the things she brought up that I thought was a great point is that electric cars get greener with time. So what does that mean? Well, let's say, you know, 10 years ago, you bought an internal combustion engine vehicle, a gasoline car, or 10 years ago, you bought an electric car. So when you first bought those cars, they're going to have some carbon footprint. And assuming they're very similar in size and everything, the electric car may have a slightly higher carbon footprint as a result of needing that battery. And so then, as you start to use them, uh, the electric car has an advantage in transportation uh, because it doesn't produce as much carbon as it's actually driving. Now that's purely dependent on where it gets its energy from. And so if that energy comes from, you know, purely coal, then obviously uh, it does doesn't do as well than if its energy came from solar or renewables. And so often this is used as an argument to say that, you know, electric cars don't make any sense. When in reality, you know, coal only makes up 14% of energy production in the United States. And that number is declining uh, versus renewable energy, which doesn't make up 14% yet, but the number is increasing. And so you have to start to look at the trend. And so historically, uh, energy production becomes greener, becomes, has less of a carbon footprint as you, you know, move on with time. So so we start to use cleaner methods, we start to have more efficient uh, processes of producing electricity, and so as a result, if your car is electric and you've been driving it for those 10 years, the energy production part of the equation, so you know you have the two parts, production and consumption. The energy production part starts to get better, and as a result, the energy consumption of the electric vehicle improves. So its carbon emissions improve, versus the internal combustion engine, the gasoline vehicle, ideally it just stays the same with time, because it's still, you know, hopefully getting the same miles per gallon as it you when you bought it new, and in those cases, that means it's producing the same emissions uh, from its tailpipe 
as you're driving it. Now getting to the fifth and final discussion point, I was having a discussion with Paul Fickers, who is the engineering director for Neo Formula E, and the point that he brought up, which I think is, you know, pretty much the one that universally uh, is always going to be true and makes the most sense, is that it is all about batteries. And so, you know, how quickly battery technology develops is basically the only reason uh, of what's going to change EV adoption in general. And so battery technology today is not at the point where we have super high energy densities and we also have decently long charging times. And so as a result, you know, the range isn't necessarily there, uh, the cost isn't necessarily there, and the charge time isn't necessarily there. So it's all about improving batteries and as we improve batteries more, EVs start to make more and more sense. Uh, and I think that can be demonstrated with vehicles. So I'm driving the 2018 Nissan Leaf. In 2011, this had nearly half the uh, battery capacity. It was a 24 kilowatt hour battery. And now in 2018, it's a 40 kilowatt hour battery pack in the exact same dimensions. So the energy density in those seven years has improved by 67%, a tremendous improvement. You also have more power, more torque, and the car actually costs less today than when it was introduced then. So everything about the Nissan Leaf has improved at basically the exact same price point. And so if that technology trend continues, EVs start to make a ton of sense in the future where you have longer ranges, faster charging times, and you can bring down the price. So is the future of transportation going to be electric? And I think, you know, that's heavily dependent, again, on how much do batteries improve with time. I think they do make a lot of sense uh, from an efficiency standpoint, from a cost perspective long term, uh, from, you know, an energy cost perspective, from how much energy do you need throughout the lifetime of that vehicle. There are a lot of advantages to electric cars. I think the part that now needs to be overcome is simply the battery portion of it, uh, which it is improving. So the future is always unknown, and whether that's going to be a mix of fuel cell and electric vehicles, I don't know. Uh, but it's cool to think about, and I thought there were some great perspectives offered by the folks at Formula E. So if you guys have any questions or comments, I would encourage you to leave those below. Thank you for watching.